Well, so um, uh, I really do want to appreciate uh, this panel. I want to appreciate um, uh, Chairman Omalia Shatella, the chair of the Black is Back uh, Coalition, uh, also one of the Uhuru Three, uh, which and the Uhuru Three case uh, is what um, brings us here today is what underscores the importance of this today, removing it from any um, abstraction and, and, and sort of giving us a practical political um, uh, a way forward. This is why we uh, are here today. So I want to salute the Chairman of my tell. I want to salute all of the members of the Black Society Coalition Steering Committee. I want to salute uh, uh, Mama Thea, um, uh, 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 Brother Mukasa, uh, who, who were here uh, as a part of this, this panel as well. You see Black Power Matter. Right. So uh, and it, which matters. Right. Because the, the 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 slogans that we use should give people political direction. Right. They should center African self-determination. They do not center white consciousness. Right. They center African self-determination. You heard Mukasa say that we brought Dr. King down and gave Dr. King political education. You got to understand by 1966, with the stuff that Mukasa was talking about, uh, the uh, SNCC people have been in new cities for six years. Six years. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about real political organization, mobilization right here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 and so, so, so I just want to say that. I want to appreciate uh, 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 Comrade Paul Pumphrey. Um, and and uh, for speaking on the Congo and speaking on um, uh, uh, IET Haiti, um, because uh, it really does underscore what I'm supposed to be talking about today, the significance of elections in 2024. Uh, because the thing about what Brother uh, Pumphrey uh, spoke of is that it, it's important for us to understand that 2024 is not just an election year in the United States. Right. right. Uh, when we talk about the, we, uh, this, this is an election year amidst uh, uh, a, a social system that is in crisis. Right. I'm going to go more into that, but so I don't want to go to. But yesterday, yesterday was April 12, 2024, sixth, sixth anniversary of the ballot or the bullet speech by uh, Malcolm X. In this speech, Malcolm famously stated. Uh, and and just let me know if the sound is okay, because I know we're like double recording. Okay, horrible. Malcolm said, I say again, I'm not a Democrat. Uh, 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 I'm not a Republican. And he said, I'm not anti-Democrat, I'm not anti-Republican, I'm not anti-anything. I'm questioning their sincerity and some of the strategy that they've been using on our people by promising them promises that they do not intend to keep. When you keep the Democrats in power, you're keeping, uh, 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 when you keep the Democrats in power, you're keeping the Dix Dixiecrats in power. A vote for a Democrat is a vote for a Dixiecrat. That's why in 1964 he said, it's the time, it's time now for you and me to become more politically mature. <laughs> And realize what the ballot is for. What we've, or what we're supposed to get when we cast a ballot, and that's the thing, right? I think Mukasa was talking about this. They give us the boogeyman, and 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 we the only people expected to not vote for anything. You know, they have something called Negro Election Day, and this ain't on my script. I'm, I'm going road, right? And they have this thing called Negro Election Day, created by by slave masters, just to, just 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 give the enslaved Africans, the illusion of democracy. And we talk about Africans that died and all this other stuff, and it's still just the illusion of democracy. What the, 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 the illusion of inclusion? Nah, the, the inclusion into illusion is what we're talking about. So Malcolm goes on to say that uh, if we don't cast a ballot, it's going to end in a situation where we're going to have to cast a bullet. It's either ballot or the bullet. But we know that in 2024, it's the ballot and the bullet. In 2024, nearly 
half of the world's population. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, half of the world's adult population uh, are coming to the polls or have already gone to the polls this year. This means that about 2 billion people in the world are involved in the electoral process this year. And, and it's important to know that that is a part of the crisis. That is not what it is intended to be. That's not how the vote emerged. The vote emerged uh, out of the contest between sectors of the colonizer population. 76 countries will ho hold elections this year. This includes eight of 10 of the world's largest countries. And, and some of the other ones, like, like the, the, the not so United Kingdom, vote early next year. And some have voted last year. An article for Time Magazine remarked that 2024 is not just an election year, it's perhaps the election year. It is by most estimates the biggest election year in history. Now, the significance of the election year was summed up in that same article. In Taiwan, for example, uh, uh, in Taiwan, for example, uh, who becomes the next president will determine uh, Taiwan's relationship to Beijing. Not surprisingly, however, the darling of, the, of, of, of President Joseph R. Biden, Ukraine, was supposed to hold elections a couple days ago, on March 31st, 2024. They've suspended their election. So do with that as you will. Um, if the if the U.S. elections were held today, former President uh, Donald J. Trump would defeat current U.S. President Joseph R. Biden. Some polls suggest by a landslide. I mean, like fifteen percent, sixteen percent. And this is this is remarkable. We must engage seriously with this question of elections because. We must refuse to give up any democratic space to the colonizers. That's, That's, right. Right. That's right. That's right. We must force the colonizers to deal with this question of democracy. Sherman Marsh Tell teaches. As you say, that's right. That ain't me talking. That's Sherman Marsh Tell talking through me. So I just want to say that. In his address to the 2008 Impedum Convention, Chairman Omar Shatel identified the importance of electoral politics to our struggle for revolution and African independence. And I'm happy that I forwarded this at the beginning of my talk, just in case I'm not able to go through all the other stuff I have later on in the talk, um, because I am trying to be disciplined about my time. Um, I wanted to say this, because the truth is that um, the, the, the period that we are right now in uh, 2020, 24 is not disconnected from the period in 2008. 2008, if I'm correct, was another one of these sort of super election years. There were elections going on all around the world. And, and that's where the um, uh, African People's Socialist Party, through its mass organization, the International People's Democratic Horror Movement, uh, uh, got um, uh, uh, good old, uh, the, the guy used to be known as Barry, uh, to stutter. Um, uh, uh, in front of uh, the African uh, community by simply asking him one simple question. What was that question? What about the black, what about the black community? I mean, hey, if I got five dollars in my pocket and you ask me how 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 you gonna help Africans with that five dollars? I got a list of things I know I could do with that five dollars. You know, I would. You know, I so so trust me. Trust me, it, it, you know. So hey, he and, and like Chairman says, uh, you can't say he lied to you because he never promised you nothing. That's right. That's right. That's right. So uh, you know, so 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 Chairman says we understand that we have to use every available means of struggle to attain this power and to ref and, and that to refuse to utilize the electoral process when it advances the revolution is to betray the revolution. We would never want to concede invaluable democratic space to the ruling class and raise the possibility of being prematurely forced out of effective above ground political activity. And you heard uh, uh, Mama Fia speaking of that, you know, um, uh, uh, the, the importance of this and showing that uh, uh, so many of the things that we've seen in the other revolutionary organizations do have their groundings 
in uh, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Uh, excellent book to read, um, Making of Black Revolutionaries, uh, uh, James Foreman, right. right? Shows that, shows that. Um, so, so Chairman says, we're the African People's Socialist Party believe it's absolutely important, absolutely appropriate to utilize the electoral process on our own terms when it advances the struggle. And this is when we talk about the attack on the Uhuru Three, it's precisely because of our engagement, right, right. Uh, right. In, in, in the electoral process. So, so I mean, you know, sometimes you can judge politics based off of like what you do. You can also judge politics based off of the response that you get right. from what you right. do. That's right. I mean, it's more to say this because this ain't come for anybody. You can get back, rah, 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 talk all this other stuff to a, to the, to to this corner right here. You know what I mean? I mean, some white folks come to me, I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z, more, you know, and, and 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 nobody hear it, nothing happened to you, you know. Uh, uh but 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 what does it mean for us to, to do exactly to engage in the democratic process? Something that they tell you you're supposed to do, and what do we get in response? Battering rams, uh, uh, uh grenades, armored vehicles. Right, that understand that proves the correctness of the political strategy Chairman Omar Stella has laid out. That proves the correctness of the Black and Black Coalition electoral campaign school. That's what it does. So this year, um, I just want to say that um, this year is 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 a year of uh, elections in a year of colonial crisis. The global crisis of colonialism has heightened the significance of the elections this year. Chairman Amani Shatella lays this down in his call for, for today, noting two significant challenges. One challenge is the fact that the Democratic Party is losing their grip on African people. The second challenge is one that is inside the uh, colonial ruling class with the warring sectors of the ruling class. And this is important for us to understand because as we are, Chairman uh, ha ha has shown us, right, um, elections are meant to be um, a nonviolent contest of the ruling class. The conflict in occupied Palestine has impacted the electoral process. In the United Kingdom, there has been an astounding 66% drop in Muslim support for the Labor Party. No. This, this this is, I mean, like I thought they were talking about 66%, like like 6%, 66% of that number. No. 77% of Muslims said that they had supported the Labor Party, which is basically the British version of the Democrats. That's fine. That's right. Come on. Now uh no no yeah so 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 71 percent has said that now um uh five percent five percent of muslims said that they will support the demo uh, um uh, the the labor party and 40 percent say they're not going to vote at all right this is not unconnected to the uncommitted voter campaign that the Palestinians waged, right. in which they were expecting only 10,000 votes, and they got 100,000 votes of, 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 of non-committed, uncommitted. This is also not unconnected from what you'll hear about today or tomorrow with our uncommitted voter campaign. So in that call, Chairman Omar Shatella uh, um, uh, 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 notes that the electoral process, like we said, is, is generally a nonviolent contest. And, and I'll just say this for the sake of time that we've seen throughout uh, uh, the history of African struggle these flare ups of colonial crisis, right? Whether you're talking about IET, in which warring sectors of the ruling class um, uh, 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 creates a, a, a crisis through which Africans take control of, whether you talk about um, 1856 in which uh, John C. Calhoun viciously beat Charles Sumner on the floor of the Senate, 
But they like to say, oh, because the summer was an abolitionist. No, he beat him because Africans was beating white people in South Carolina. That's why he beat him. Let's be clear. He, he, Sumner was an avatar for African resistance. And that's why he was beat. Right? So that's the context we have to do and to pull that out of their hands like uh, Assist Elise is talking about out of the hands of the uh, of the white people who love us. <laughs> and to understand, no, because there was these groups called the Vigilance Committees, and the Vigilance Committees were formed uh, in response to the Fugitive Slave Act, and the Vigilance Committees were for, led by people like William Steele, uh, uh, Harriet Tubman. Like They had organization that led to the overturn of colonial slavery. But what I would like to say is that uh, this is the most significant crisis right now, and what we have, the what we have now is we have in our hands a revolutionary vanguard party of the African working class. That's they had bravery and 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 militancy. They did not have the objective of African independence and the party to lead the way. That is important to understand, right? As well as the anti-colonial coalition to do that work as well. The Black is Back Coalition for Social Justice, Peace and Reparations. So like I said, there's so much more uh, um, uh, uh, to speak on. You know, when you talk about um, this crisis of colonialism, at the moments of crisis, it's actually the, the, the colonial violence waged against African people, which the which 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 colonial powers use to stabilize the system in crisis. But no level of violence can stabilize what's going on, and, and that's what it can, can stabilize and take the United States back to uh, in the West back to a period of of of, of, of hegemony and global hegemony and moral authority over the world. In fact, we see this. Not a single person on October 7th, well, we would have, but not a single person in the State Department on October 7th would have thought that Israel would still be dealing with what they had to deal with almost seven months later. Yeah, yeah. That's a reflection of the will for people to fight, but the will for people to fight is a reflection of the crisis of imperialism, but also the organization, the organization that happens amidst that crisis, right? So I just want to say that because I'm nearing the end of, of my time. I just say that the colonizers have interest in the outcome of the elections, clearly placing their finger on the scale. Mm -hmm. The colonial mode of protection is dismantling this entire world system is based on colonialism, including the electoral system. Right. But we see things like the Silk Road Project, BRICS, all these other formations. Of course, these are not revolutionary organizations, but they're anti imperialist organizations. They are organizations which challenge Western colonial hegemony over, over the world. Coming in 2020, into 2024, there have already been some significant elections. I would argue. Lula returning to power. Lula has used, in Brazil, has used his power to uh, speak out against the genocide in Gaza. Uh, over in Slovakia, a guy by the name of Peter Pellegrini uh, was, was elected, um, a, a pro-Russian candidate was elected. And Putin was also re-elected with 87% of the vote, I mean, which I think is sort of just, just a remarkable thing for us to understand. And like, Ukraine has canceled their elections for the unforeseeable future. Right, but, but you know, so, so I just wanna say that. Um, so, so I'll just say this and then we'll end. Africa can now speak with one voice. We must study the international significance of this electoral year, not just in the US, this, this allows for us to see our own significance right here. It's important to understand. Yeah. This is just as significant as 
any Niagara conference or those summits that 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 that, that, that people had in the 1850s in Canada and upstate and western New York, western New York and things like that because this is Africa planning for itself the future of Africa but also the world. Right so as I've noted, there have been moments of serious colonial crisis. These crises have historically impacted the electoral process in the past. In those previous periods, the colonial state has been able to regain control, but they're not going to regain control. Uh -huh. Right. So, 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 so we got to put our foot on the gas and mash. So, who are everybody? Like I said, hopefully this really sort of added to it. Black Power Matters, Vanguard Up. Black is back, religious, religious.